Good morning and welcome to the Midweek Touchpoint here at the Speak Easy Podcast. And today we have with us here in the studio, Pastor, Pastor Robert Cockbill, and he's coming today to share, encourage, and inspire. So Pastor Cockbill, welcome. How are you? Doing fine. Thank you for having me. Great. So Pastor Cockbill, tell the listening audience who you are and a little bit about yourself. Uh, just a brief synopsis. I'm, I'm uh, Dr. Robert Cockfield, and I'm here in San Antonio, Texas, and I am the uh, CEO and founder of Get Up Community Center and the pastor of Get Up uh, Ministries, and uh, currently am also a uh, restaurant owner at Shut Your Mouth Fish and Seafood, which is really a community-based um, restaurant where we feed the community. Very good. Very good. So, Pastor Cockfield, I want you to come in your way and share with the audience today, inspire and encourage. So take it away. Um, I, I want to talk about conflict creators and peacemakers. Uh, I want to reiterate that conflict creators and peacemakers. And one of the things I want to uh, stress um, as I'm dialoguing about this is that conflict is good. Uh, we all need it. But how we respond. Currently, uh, on, on every week, uh, Constance Word, Word has a, uh, a, a space where we talk about uh, sabotaging behaviors. And so one of the things that I touched on in the last couple of weeks is this, is that, uh, you know, when conflict comes, it can be from a spouse or children or anyone, be your boss, whoever it may be, how do we respond? And so the sabotaging behavior we tend to look at others as the ones who are creating that behavior, that sabotage behavior, and, and those attributes that come with it. It could be anger, it could be frustration, it could be um, being, someone being vindictive, et cetera. But do we look at ourselves as also being, a, uh, being one that sabotages others in the way we respond? And let me make clarity on that. So when conflict comes, if I'm not careful in how I respond, then I'm sabotaging not only the individual that I'm responding to, but globally those that are within this sphere or and or global presence. And we have to be very careful with that. Not only uh, do we hurt others um, that are part of our, uh, our immediate uh, space and place, but globally, what message does it send about your content and character? And so this, again, conflict, it's, it's nothing wrong with conflict. It's just, again, uh, how do we respond? What does community of people that are within our space and place, what it, how do they see us as far as our content and character when we respond? And, and one last thing before I get started, conflict is inevitable. Um, it's, it's just life is not fair. And everyone is made different. God intended that uh, to happen. Um, our DNA is different from anyone else. We're, we're the only one on the planet who we are. And God... Um, intentionally has us here for purpose and intent. What is that? And so when we know or don't know what that is, conflict is inevitable because people will challenge who you are and, and why God got you here. And so I want to start off with um, just a few notes and then I'm going to read the passage of scripture that I'm coming from, which is 1 John 2, 7 through 14. Uh, conflict can be good and in communities, it's inevitable. The ways in which we respond to it can display and develop character. So if you thought, think about what I forestated, it, it should build character, not destroy your character or other individuals' character, but it should build it up. And, and that content that we have is really what is the foundation into which the character is built on. So uh, let me throw this out here. All the things that we've been through in life and the way that we respond, the way we reacted, uh, what we accepted and didn't accept really talk, really builds that content. The things that we take in that trash and debris could be just part of that, too. So think about this. A lot of times we take in gossip. We take in um, what others say about us as far as who we are as individuals. And, and if you're not careful, you will accept those things. It could simply be that. Um, from a from a, a cognitive perspective, what I read, what I what 
what what messages I hear. All of that stuff, when we take in that stuff, it is really uh, being deposited as our content. The character is what's displayed by the stuff that we've taken in and how we've processed it and we're pushing it back out. So think about that. In that development of that character, how are you being developed as far as what you're taking in as an individual? Remember, we're body, soul, and spirit. And so at the end of the day, um, our spirit should be plugged into God's spirit. And then, then our soul and our body should line up with that which the spirit would have us to do, which the Bible says that, that, um, uh, that we should follow the spirit of the Lord, um, do what it, it is asking us to do. So, um, and then we worship him in spirit and truth. The truth prevails. What is the word? That's, that's period. So the word should prevail and be our, our benchmark and standard. And then the spirit of the Lord will lead and guide us to that truth. And then we got to be led. You can't try to lead it. So uh, now think about this. But what if we are the ones responsible for creating conflict with others? And let's think about this. What if it's us? What, how do we respond? It could just be that we are not where we ought to be in God. And then we start conflict. And, and again, conflict can be good if it's u- utilized as a tool in the right way. Um, but, but what if it's not? So my job is to encourage you and, and myself today that conflict is good, but what are we doing with it? So John 2, 7 through 14, I want to read that. And um, and it wants to think about what it's saying. Um, so I'll start with verse 7. Dear, and, and, and this was uh, supposed to be a new commandment uh, by the writer. Dear friends, I am not writing a new commandment for you. Rather, it's an old one you have had for from the beginning. This old commandment to love one another is the same message you heard before. So that's verse seven. Verse eight says, yet it is also new. Jesus lived the truth of this commandment. And you also are living it for the darkness is disappearing and the true light is also shining. Verse nine says, if anyone claims I am living in the light, but hates a fellow believer, that person is still living in darkness. Verse 10 says, anyone who loves a fellow believer is living in the light and does not cause others to stumble. Verse 11 says, but anyone who hates a fellow believer is still living and walking in darkness. Such a person does not know the way to go, having been blinded by the darkness. Verse 12 says, I am writing to you who are God's children because your sins have been forgiven through Jesus. Verse 13 says, I'm writing to you who are mature in faith. Because you know Christ who existed from the beginning. I am writing to you who are young in faith because you have won your battle with the evil one. Verse 14 says, I have written to you who are God's children because you know the father. I have written to you who are mature in the faith because you know Christ who existed from the beginning. I have written to you who are young in faith because you are strong. God's word lives in your hearts and you have won your battle with the evil one. So think about this, just brief synopsis of what I read. So first of all, he's, he's, he's letting us know that this commandment that he was uh, forestating was not nothing new. And that at the end of the day, that we ought to love one another. That's the main message. And that when we say we love someone and yet um, our actions don't line up, we're hating them. It's oxymoron. That is that is oil and water. Then we're lying. We're not being truthful. The premise behind that is simply this. Why would we say we love someone and we don't? I give some 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 human reasons of why, you know, um, a lot of times we say it, but we don't even know what love is. We, we don't. Some of us have heard the word and in its context and say it, just repeat it, but our heart is far from it. We harboring things that happened in the past or and or we haven't forgiven ourselves or and or it may be that certain spaces, places and things are trigger points for us and it'll cause us to regress. And instead of being blessed and going further than the hurt, we will continue to say and do some things that don't line up with God, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. 
So in other words, God requires us to love him and to love others. And then Jesus came to exemplify what that should look like. And the spirit of the Lord reminds us and leads and guides us back to what the truth is, which is the word. When we don't allow that process and those transactions and transitional points to happen, then we fail ourselves and we fail others. So he was just simply saying that we got to love folks. And that's the true light. And if we don't, we're dark. We're in darkness. It's not the love of God is not shining or the love of our content character is not even. And, and if you claim that to love someone, but then you hate them, you still, you haven't changed. You have not progressed. You have not found yourself maturing, not only in God, but as a believer, uh, as him or herself. And then when we are walking in this darkness, then what we find ourselves, then we will perpetuate that. And we insinuate to others that they need to join in on that. That's that's, that's shameful. Um, in many cases, I even myself have found myself doing that and didn't even realize it. I had a beef with someone and then I said, oh, you know what? I forgive you. And I did. And it was evident by the way that I walked, talked and that I and the things that I stood for when times came when I should have stood up, I laid down. I, I allow people to say things about people that I shouldn't have. I found myself uh, entertaining it and I, I found myself vetting it. And that is that is uh, dangerous because what we do in others, we reciprocate unto ourselves. Then people will realize that you really your content and character is not consistent and measurable. And then they find themselves doing that same thing unto you um, down the road. So we, we have to hold a standard and let folks know that that love we have is genuine, pure. And love simply means this, in the Bible too, we look past folks' faults and, and we see them in Christ, not as ourselves or others. And we hear this thrown out a lot. Uh, love people as you love yourself. I'm learning, no, I'm gonna love you as God loves me. That's safer, that's pure, that's more solid. Because there's days I don't love myself. So I'm trying to re reintroduce myself back to God and find myself reacclimating myself to God and that word and then get back on track. So think about that. Uh, when, when you go to engage people and we're talking about this loving folks, then the, you love God first. And then he teaches us how to love others. And it's in his purest form. So the other thing is, if you think about this, he kept saying, that, you know, God forgave us, we ought to forgive others. So here's another touch point I want to throw at. At the end of the day, we all have sin and fell short of the glory of God. So what are we doing to love on other individuals and forgive them just as much as we're asking them to forgive us? Um, just recently, I have found myself again, checking myself against, bumping myself up against the word and how I respond to things. So recently, and even within an hour, um, there are some personal things in my life and folks that are personal to me and have been in my life for a long time. And my responses are getting better. Uh, as they say, you practice what you preach. So the th very things I'm saying to you, uh, iron sharpens iron. I'm finding myself saying, uh oh, again, conflict is great. It's, it, it just depends on how it's done, when it's done, why it's done, where it's done, and what the response is. Um, so when conflict comes, you got to ask yourself, where are you in this? Stop before you open your mouth, before you, even your body language. Think about that. I say I love someone, I've forgiven them, but some things were said and done by another human being, and then I call myself, detaching from my spirit being plugged up to God's spirit and now it's got personal. No, before you, when, now think about this, that who, what, where, when, and why is important. Who's saying what? When is it being said? Because that's important because where are you at with God? Where is it being said? Is it public? See, a lot of times we'll take private matters and make them public. And there's no reason for that. We're just doing it because we want to get stuff off our chest or we want to make a chest move in order to disprove somebody else's actions. 
not fair. That that's foul. So so who's saying it? Think about that. What is being said? Where is it being said? When? Timing. We got to think about that. I think a lot of times our timing is terrible. We'll just pick some of the most awkward times to say some of the most awkward stuff because we don't want to admit we ourselves are not in sync with God. Our timing is bad. Man, is we we have read the word, we haven't we, we haven't practiced it. So reading it and practicing are two different things. That goes along with this love and 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 the forgiveness thing. Because I can read the word all day long. I can read it just like a history book. But practicing what you're saying sharpens and engages us with God, and it helps us to be better at what we do. And then we do it with grace, mercy, kindness, or those things are the fruit of the spirit. That, that's important. That like Galatians 5th chapter 6. When, so, so timing. Before you, we say anything, if we say we love people, if we say, you know, we want to be truthful to the commandments of God, we say that we want to live and, and, and don't kill folks with our tongue. We don't want them, their content character to die or ours either. Timing. Think about it before you say it. Think about it where you who what. Think about think about all of that timing before you say what you say. So if Christ forgave us, what more should we do for others? And then think about this: the enemy who comes to steal, kill, and destroy. Lucifer in his previous glorified state, Satan in his present state, his job is to kill, steal, and destroy. Man, how many times? Have I found myself in the throes of life, not paying attention to what is going on, and then I lose it. And then character is killed. Hmm? Good name is killed. Uh, relationships are killed. Destroyed. We've stolen content and character from each other intellectual capacity and property and and that happens because we don't we don't get that at the end of the day that we could be thieves too we could steal from each other we, we steal love and life and respect we do that when we don't think about what the writer was trying to get us to understand don't say you love me and then your actions are totally different so i want to uh, go back to my notes real quick and then I'm finished. So John was addressing the root of chronic conflict in a letter to a church community. And he tells them. And he tells them. That. The one who says he is in the light and hates his brother is in the dark. I want us to think about that. We say it, but do we really mean it? And that's important. So, so the root of it, he was talking about this chronic conflict. The one who says he is in the light and hates his brother is in darkness until now. He's saying you have an opportunity to course correct. The one who loves his brother resides in the light. and There is no cause for stumbling in him. Now, when we uh, find ourselves in conflict and our responses are wrong, we stumble. We think we're we're entrapping others to so they can stumble. No, you're you're entrapping yourself and then you stumble. And and the one who hates his brothers in darkness and walks in the darkness and does not know where he is going because the darkness has blinded his eyes. Now let me throw this out here. It's been a many day and a many times that man I got so mad I lost my mind. Just lost it. And then I ain't know where I was. You, you heard people say, man, I was so mad. I, man, I passed out. I just, and, 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 and not in a literary, literary sense, it's just you're fogged. You, you start saying stuff that don't make no sense. I, I remember, and I've seen folks that got so mad that even when they cuss, the cussing just is ridiculous. Don't even make no sense. You just cussing and be cussing and just saying stuff that don't even, no. It, or you get so enraged 
you blind. You can't even see that you done lost your mind. You you just you and you thinking you're a sane, but you're insane. Um, Einstein says, look, if you keep doing the same thing that's not getting results over and over, you're insane. And that when we when we blind it with this darkness in our life, stuff that we have not dealt with, and we call ourselves, you know, saying we love folks, but man, we spewing hate or you know, things that don't line up with the way God would have us to be. We'll, we're going to stumble. You're hurting yourself. You're not helping others. And, and, you're, and, and not only that, you know, I want to stress this. Who's really hurting more? We think we hurt them, but really we were hurting more because we wanted to, you know, get even or whatever. And it never works out. We, we, we just still find ourselves in the same state or worse than we were before. So John was giving the church a way in which they could judge false teachers who created conflict and division. And some of us got to be careful what we saying and teaching and, and talking to people about because we're giving them misinformation, not only about who God is, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, spiritual things, but even natural things. When we talk about other people and then we don't even know who they are. We, we know of them, but we don't know them. The Bible says only God knows the heart of a man or woman. So before we get to saying things that, you know, we think we know, check in with God. I guarantee you God will have your mouth shut because we don't really know people. Uh, you know, I'm, I've been married 41 years. I made this comment to my wife. I said, man, I thought I knew you. I don't. Vice versa. You know, because we, we change. Life will carve and craft us. The Bible talks about you know, God being the potter and we're clay and he's trying to shape us and mold us. He allowed life to do that. But one of the things you got to understand over time, life as it is, is carving and crafting us and making us into who we should be. What happens when we don't allow God to be the potter and the enemy would love to be the replacement? Things change and shift. Another analogy. A lot of times when we have these hurts and disappointments in our life, we have, I call them, and I preach and teach this about these boxes, right? Um, where we, we uh, the lies we tell, we hold things in and then we compartmentalize them and put them in these boxes, small, medium, large. And then life, God, the potter, and he's chiseling it clay. He's shaping us. And then he'll allow things that come out. And then, then we got a choice. We either put them back in the box or we, or we leave them out. That's pretty much what John was trying to get us to understand that we need to know people who are in our lives, what what purpose and intent they are in our lives, what transactional and transitional things are to happen. And then what do we do with that information? And is it misinformation? If it's misinformation, they're false teachers. If if it's, it's if it's correct information, then then it should line up with the light, and, you know, with with our spiritual light. And that, that again, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, we, we're walking in that light and that light is being uh, illuminated to us to remind us that we belong to God. That's that's true people that we should be walking with. We should remind each other of that. So. I just want to throw this out here that that light they dwelled in was shown in their love for other Christians and it should be shown also. And I'm going to throw this out here for others, period. Um. I want to touch on this before uh, I stop. Don't judge a book by its cover. There are certain family members or people that we run into and we're supposed to love them too. And because of their persuasion, be it religiously or sexuality or whatever it is, right? We'll dismiss them. I believe that God don't make mistakes. He put, he put all kinds of people in our space and place to help us to better navigate life and to know who we are and, and, and who we belong to and why we do what we do and to bring us either closer or further from God. Now, that's conflict sometimes when family members agree or disagree with us or coworkers or whoever. Always walk away with wanting to know what that lesson was about. Quit judging the person and, and be thankful that God allowed them in your space place and say, God, now why were they here? And did I display love in spite of the conflict or the indifferences? Was I able to get people to see 
who I belong to and what I represent. Now, if I'm supposed to be a Christian, maybe they're not. That is important. People should walk away understanding and knowing what you stand for. So you love the love for other Christian followers is not optional. There's no opt out clauses in loving others. It is an outpouring of that love that God shows us. The nature of our inner personal relationships is a reflection of where we stand with him, God. The inner personal relationships is a reflection of where we stand with him. The external conflict has hatred, listen to this, as its root might point to our own inner internal or, or internal conflict, one that can be defined by disagreement between what we confess and how we live. That's first John one and six. So what is causing conflicts in our in your relationships? And if you are the one causing conflict, how can you seek peace with God and others? I'm gonna read first John um, one and six. So we are lying, this is this. If if we say, wow, we have fellowship with God, but go on living in spiritual darkness. We are not practicing the truth. That's about as plain as you can put it. That's it. You're lying. I'm lying. Are, are you lying today? Are you lying right now? Am I lying? No. Let's not do that. Let's, let's, not, let's not lie. Right? If we say we love God and love people, do it. It doesn't mean you're going to, you got to learn it. Listen to this. Agree to disagree. You got to get a win-win. Right? And that's, that's tough for us. The win-win is, is that we stay connected to God and we stay true to his word and our content character speaks volumes about loving God and loving people. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and then the righteous things of God. See, that's important. Seek God before we open our mouths, before we do anything, before we uh, um, even, even think about this, even before we start thinking about how we gonna get even with somebody. No, 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 no. Think on these things. The Bible talks about these, 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 these things, the one, things of God. Think on those first. That should be our guiding principle. And before we open our mouth for say we're gonna do. Uh, last thing. Think about this. If 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 we want to be at peace in our our lives, we gotta seek peace with others. That's it. You know, because if you think about it, that's why a lot of us on the job, in our homes, church, everywhere. If 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 you're not seeking peace with God, then you're gonna get a piece of somebody else. And and a lot of times we've given out so many pieces of ourselves, we don't even know who we are no more. That puzzle is so fragmented. So I want to end in prayer and I want to thank uh Constance uh for allowing me this opportunity. And and I hope prayerfully that we find ourselves wanting to do better um in dealing with others and um reminding ourselves at the end of the day, right? The end of the day, what does it really come down to? It comes down to, are we a conflict creator or are we a peacemaker? So, dear God, we just thank you for your goodness and mercy, power and your glory. Thank you for keeping, leading, guidance and giving us strength. Thank you for your grace and mercy. And may we find ourselves fulfilling our purpose and intent and learning to teach others that we love God and they should too. In your blessed name. Amen. 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 Pastor Cockfield, I want to thank you so much for those encouraging words. I'm sure our listening audience gathered something from that, gained some insight. And until next week, may God bless each and every one of you and have a good rest of your day. <music>